Okay, welcome. Uh, I get a lot of questions about tools. Uh, what tools should I buy? How do I use certain tools? What tools I have? What are my favorite tools? Etc. Etc. And uh, it's very difficult to give a good answer to those questions. We all like different kind of tools to different kind of work. Big tools, small tools, sharp tools, blunt tools, whatever. And uh, I thought what I can do is uh, I can show you some of my tools that I use. Now there's a huge variety of different kind of tools in, in rope work. So uh, we can take a look at some of the basic tools that I have, that I use the most. And, uh, well, I went in my DT bags here, so we can take a look at some of the tools and, and what they are called, how they are used. Let's dig in. Okay, we'll start with maybe the most important tool that I have, and that's my poko. The poko is a Finnish type of knife. That's a bit different than maybe a sailor's knife or a, or a rigger's knife. It's quite thick, so it takes pounding sharp all the way to the tip, so you can do some carving. Then you use it for for carving wood. You can use it even for making food, eating food. It's also good for for canvas. And of course I use it for cutting small ropes. And good even for for a larger size rope. Cuts very nicely. Uh, that's the tool that I use the most. I carry it with me. I received this one from my father 40 years ago and I had it with me ever since, every day. I use it all the time. And now I do have uh, many other kind of knives also. The common thing is that they are all made of high carbon steel. Very easy to keep sharp, very handy tools. I do own some in stainless steel but I don't use them other than maybe scraping paint tool. Something in that manner. Uh, one that I do use is uh, old Swedish mortar knife, and that's when I'm cutting ropes. So it's very handy to cut ropes with, and that's what I use this knife for. That's too big to have have as a ordinary knife in your hand. And if I go to larger larger size ropes I have this one. That's kind of a rigorous knife on steroids. And it cuts through larger size ropes like nothing. Don't use it too often when it's good to have. But that said, Pukka is the most important cutting tool that I have. Uh, for smaller ropes, and when I'm working with, with small stuff, I use my uh, flush cutters. Now these are made of tall steel, so they are s too soft for cutting wire, but very good for cutting fiber ropes or twines. 
very sharp and they cut exactly flush. Easy to keep sharp. And they do work even, even for larger size ropes. So that's maybe after Pukko, this is the tool that I use for cutting most. Uh, Scissors I use for canvas. Very good old, also carbon steel. Easy to keep sharp. So I do have a pair of fiskars, but I don't use them too often. Maybe to cut sandpaper or something like that. But these are very good. That's about the cutting tools that I have. So let's take uh, look at this next. Fid. Now there's lots of confusion. What's a fid? What's a marlin spike? What's a pricker? What's the difference there? How do you define them? And uh, usually they say that a pricker. It's kind of a marlin spike with wooden handle, and a uh, marlin spike is made of steel, and a feed is made of wood. But that's not exactly the true difference between these tools. The difference is that a feed is a splicing tool. It's how you use these tools that, that makes the difference. So you use it. Oh, it's a hard rope. For opening strands in splicing. That's what you use it for. That's a splicing tool. Uh, now they can be made in all kind of materials. So this one is made of apple wood and they can be made in any kind of material that's hard enough smooth enough. Now this one's made of lignum vitae and uh, why it was so popular to make feeds in lignum vitae is just because it's hard enough, it's easy to get smooth and it's oily wood. So that was just an easy way to make a good feed. Uh, but they can be made in any kind of wood. As I said, this is apple wood, uh, ash is quite used for feeds. Uh, the only problem with ash is that it, uh, it has big pores, so you need to have, get it very smooth and oil or wax to fill, fill the pores. But it's it's very handy, doesn't break too easily since it's ash. Uh, one of my favorite uh, feeds is uh, that's actually hazel. That's very light, but it's hard enough and easy to get smooth. And what I like uh, in my feeds is that they have a long taper. They are more like a sailmaker's feed, as they are called. But that's uh, how I like them. And maybe you like them. A bit more round, a thicker. Can't say. Uh, that's made of uh, swordfish bill. Very smooth. That's a bit of an oval. Very easy to use. That's uh, antler. Antler is very good. It's smooth and hard and everything. Combines it, everything. Very good fit. African black wood, damson, that's bone, also very good for a small thing. So they can be made in, in all kinds of sizes and, and materials, as long as it's hard enough. And as I said, a feed is a splicing tool. Uh, and come to marlin spikes. 
and the marlin spike uh, can be used as a feed for splicing very good for that but for larger size ropes you would need a larger marlin spike and that makes it not so useful it's very heavy to splice ordinary fiber rope so the larger size marlin spikes they are actually used mostly for splicing wire and since it's steel you can't splice wire it which you can't do with the feed now this is maybe how the marlin spikes looked in the beginning that's forged from a ship spike flat in the end round as the name says a marlin spike uh, they are quite often marlin spikes they are flat in the end and uh, I like them that way uh, since it with hard rope or small rope it's easier to get between the strands and also when tightening knots when I have a knot when tightening knot it gives some more friction with flat point but that's how you how you get used to uh, another type of marlin spike that's used quite often up here is a marlin spike with a wooden handle uh, and it's not the pricker actually the pricker looks like this this the pricker is a smaller in the point that's a more more of a sailmaker's tool you can use it for splicing or or tightening knots uh, anything but since it's uh, almost sharp you can pierce holes also in canvas without breaking the fibers which you can't do with the feed a very difficult even with marley spike so it's a bit sharper in the end with wooden handle and then it's called a pricker uh, I have my one of my favorite tools is what I call a speed that's something uh, between a small feed marlin spike and pricker very good round tool when splicing more ro small ropes especially when tightening knots this is what I use 90% of the time when I'm do, working with small stuff fits nicely in your hand since you are working with all with the tip but also can be used for splicing very handy small tool uh, another model that I have is the one that I carry in my pocket that's one of my travelers Marlin spikes so it fits in in your pocket otherwise it's uh, quite similar to this one uh, one that I use for very very small ropes is uh, I think it's called a lacing feed and that uh, comes from uh, leather work so when you are tightening knots made of rawhide or, or leather that's very good tool for that but I use it mainly, mainly to small 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 ropes that's that and uh, then there's another model of feed and that's what's called a Swedish feed now this is not the typical Swedish feed uh, since I make all my tools myself they don't, don't look like maybe the ones that you find in your local hardware store but this is uh, quite similar to a Swedish feed they are made of uh, stainless steel uh, sheet and I make them in a round tube but the idea is uh, quite similar it's used so that you open the strands ah, in your rope it's a little bit moist here 
and you can either pull the strands or you can use it the other way by pushing the strands through. So my uh, feeds uh, they have a slight grip in the end so they are very good for pulling strands. And uh, that's called a Swedish feed and as I said it's a feed since it's a splicing tool so that's not a Marlin spike. Uh, come in all different sizes. This one I use very much, a good small size feed. Splicing and also works when tightening knots and when building knots. Very useful tool. So that's one of my workhorses. Uh, you can make them yourself in any kind of material. Here is bone I've used and even a copper tube. Now copper tubing is very soft so I don't recommend it but it is possible to make your own just with simply cutting a forming a, a copper tube. Uh, and since we're talking about feeds, there's uh, also tools that are quite often called as feeds, though they are not. And that's a lacing needle. Uh, what's a lacing needle? Lacing needle, you can use it as a feed if you are splicing rope, then it's a feed. But since these are usually used so that you attach a piece of cord in the end and pull it through and that makes it a needle. So that's why they are called a lacing needle. Uh, they come uh, from leather working. When, we, when you are working with leather laces, that's why it's called a lacing needle. I had them in all, all different sizes, up to 10 mil. The smallest ones uh, I have are only one and a half mil. Also for small cordage from Lasse Karenwall in, in Sweden. So these I don't make myself. Too small for me. So that's lacing needles. Uh, and then of course I have my needles. For canvas work. And uh, that's what I recommend a good sail needle if you're doing canvas work. And since it can be heavy, a good seaming palm or roping palm is good to have when you are sure Otherwise, it can be hard. So, that's also a tool that I use very much. Well, I think we've covered the most of the tools here. Uh, well, maybe this one, also in canvas work, small seam rubber. Now you can do without, but that's very good for creasing canvas. You can do it like with with the end of your knife also, or with anything. I like to use a, a small seam rubber. I also have a place for for needles here, so makes the handy needle case also.
Uh, but that's about the basic tools that I have. As said, there are a huge variety of different kind of tools that uh, can be used in, in rope work, but we can take that another time. Hope you got something out of this and if you have questions, please ask. See you next time.